as Nat alluded to, that wasn't an easy road. So I graduated from Curtin, top of my year. I had two scholarships. I thought I would wander out into the wide world and start beating off um, job offers. <laughs> I really didn't. It didn't happen that way at all. I, I walked into um, a world of rejection letters. If you've been rejected from Channel 8 Darwin, you know you've hit a low point. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a good day. And I think if I can look in hindsight, that was where, certainly as an adult, the, the awareness of having to choose courage, although I'm sure I wouldn't have been able to articulate it that way back then, that's when that started. The incident that Nat referred to in my bio um, was one of, one of the, th the four TV stations here in Perth, not the one I obviously ended up working for. Um, they invited me in for an interview, so I was extremely excited, as you can imagine. I've gone in, all big hair and big eyebrows, because it was 1998, and um, shoulder pads too, and um, sat down, and the news director said to me, well, I've looked at your CV, and I've looked at your showreel, because that's what journalists take with them, a, 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 what we would have then had on a VHS of all of the work that you've done. Um, but we don't think that you've got any talent and we don't think that you've got a career in broadcast and you're certainly not what this network would ever want. And I'm 22, you know. I'm a pretty ballsy 22-year-old, but it's still, that was, that was not easy to hear. So I plucked up what level of, you know, what amount of um, self-respect I had remaining at that point, and I looked him in the eye and I said, thank you for your honesty, I will not waste my time on this network ever again. And I walked out, got to my car, started crying, <laughs> got home, put on some 90s angst music, lay in a dark room, cried for the rest of the day, and then picked myself up, dusted myself off, and just kept going. And the thing was, it was fuel for my fire. And without knowing about it, that's what picking courage over comfort looks like, amongst other things. So about two months after that, I was hired by the Seven Network. I was a chief of staff of that newsroom within a year. I stayed 10 years, you know, fortunate enough to do great work with great people. Really, really loved my job. On the 18th of July, 2003, I walked out, had a business card and mobile phone and was like, oh my God. Oh my God. I remember walking down the Floriot Forum shops. It was raining. I was, I, I must have given up on life because I think I was in trackies. I think I was wearing trackies. <laughs> and calling myself a consultant going, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't actually know. I, I had an idea sort of thing. So my strategy was just to hit up everybody that I'd ever worked with as a journalist in my contact book and say, hey, this is what I'm now doing. If I can help in any way, let's talk. And strangely enough, the work came in. And the fun thing about it is people would say, oh, we've got this we need you to do. Can you do that? And I'd say, absolutely, we, being me, because I was on my own, we can do this. And then I would ring up one of my mentors and go, what, what does that mean? <laughs> what? And my friend was the, the PR manager at Royal Perth Hospital at the time. And she said to me, Gemma, a strategy is just a fancy way of saying what you're going to do. And I was like, okay, that I can cope with. One of the things that is the most devaluing, debilitating and restrictive things that can come out of your mouth is I don't have a choice. I feel like you always have a choice. You always have a choice. You can always do something. You can always do something. I could have stayed at seven and been miserable. I could have stayed in a comfort zone. I was good at my job. They asked me back about three months later. I laughed my head off. I could have stayed there, but it was not... You know, a comfortable life will never be the life you want to live. The comfortable life will never expand your life. It will never grow your life. It will never take you to the places that you are capable of because it will never be stretched. One thing that I've learned professionally and personally over the last five to 10 years is that if you let it, the valleys of your life will grow you, stretch you, build you, and take you further than the mountain summits will ever take you. But it comes down to how you choose to walk through them. It comes down to how you choose to, to journey through them, whether you choose to go, right, oh, this is terrible, but I'm putting one foot after another and I'm going to take the great stuff out of this because there's always great stuff. There is, you just have to look for it. For some of you, courage will be about spending more time with your family. For some of you, it'll be about getting out of a bad relationship. For some of you, it'll be about quitting your job or upskilling. For some of you, as it was for me, it'll be about running a half marathon because you thought, oh, I don't think I can ever do that. I finished third last. It's fantastic. <laughs> In my very first one, and I just about died, I swear to God. But I did it. 
And I, and I did another one two months after that and I was a lot better, but I haven't run in four years. <laughs> I took up kickboxing two years ago and I did my first kickboxing fight last year. Scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Just for, for each of us, it will look different. For me, this year, courage has looked like saying yes to another board position. It's looked like expanding my business when everybody else around me is contracting. I've since January hired two more staff. I've got one more coming on board. Hopefully in the next two months, we've developed an entirely new media training service offering. We've invested where others are shrinking. For me, that's what courage looks like. I could stay in the comfort zone. I could stay in the cave with all of the other bears, but I'm running with the bulls because that's the only way I know how. That's the, that is the place that is the place where you find the reward in life. So start where you can, because it looks different for everyone. Like I said before, for some of you being brave today will just be, I don't know, maybe saying no to something that you felt pressured to say yes to. Maybe putting some healthy boundaries in different areas of your life. Maybe saying, you know what, I'm gonna quit smoking or I might, I might go do the you know, city to surf 12K walk, whatever. Everybody, it looks different, but start where you can. Understand that in life and in business, you will get what you tolerate and nothing more. It's that simple. In every area of your life, if you get what you tolerate. I would encourage you to look at your lives and cut out the dead wood. I feel like a little bit Oprah here, but <laughs> the truth is not all relationships are good relationships. And I'm not just talking about personal relationships, I'm talking about friendships, whatever. Not all relationships are good relationships. Not all business is, not, is good business. I remember the first time I sacked a client, my God, it was liberating. And the business wasn't, you know, it wasn't rolling in clover. It was probably three years old and this client was rude rude to my, not rude to me, they wouldn't dare, they were rude to my staff and I think that that is such a terrible flaw of character if you are rude or cruel to someone who's, you know, she was a junior, what, what was that going to achieve? So I'd addressed it with them, they didn't correct it, so I cut them loose and I tell you what, once you stop being a slave to that, the, the, lib the feeling of liberation is fantastic. My business, part of our DNA is, and I've worked very hard to protect this over the years, is I pick and choose who I work with. And that goes from banks to infrastructure funds to governments. I've said no to some really, really big clients because I don't like their DNA and I know that it won't end well if we don't share the same view on life.